What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Monday, November 14th, 2022, and I have an important climate alert to share with you guys. So we have the La Nina in full swing right now, and the La Nina is really strengthening and deepening. And I wanted to just give you an update on that. We are in a triple La Nina, which is extremely rare. I think the last time we had a triple La Nina was like 2010. And if you remember from 2008 all the way through 2011, those three winters were extremely, extremely snowy and cold here in the U.S. and also in Europe. There were some record cold temperatures in Europe, and I believe in uh, the UK, they had like two feet of snow in the UK uh, in 2010. So those years, we had like a triple La Nina. So we haven't had a triple La Nina in basically a decade. So a La Nina basically favors Arctic outbreaks in the Northern Hemisphere winters. So make sure you guys have all your winter preps in order as we get closer and closer to the heart of winter, okay? Finalize your last minute winter prep items. I'm going to be doing some winter survival videos and winter prepping videos. I've already done a whole bunch. You can check out my winter survival playlist and I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner of the screen. But Basically, you want to make sure you have an alternate heat source. Make sure you have wool blankets and sleeping bags for everyone in your house. Make sure you have traction devices and snowshoes if you live in a snowy area like I do. Because if you have to walk around in the snow or ice, you want to make sure you have a good grip on that kind of uh, terrain. Especially if it's a a grid-down situation, a long-term grid-down situation. You're definitely going to need some good traction devices and snowshoes if you live in a snowy area. Uh, Also, we want to think about your outerwear. Make sure you have good quality outerwear with some kind of waterproof, breathable membrane like Gore-Tex or something similar. It doesn't have to be Gore-Tex as long as it's similar to that. And make sure you have plenty of wool socks, good quality boots, good quality gloves and mitts. Okay, think about all these things. Finalize all these things. So I want to just share the latest information uh, on this La Nina that is really getting strong now. And again, the third La Nina in a row. And so this is very rare. And what you're looking at here is just a temperature map of North America. And you can see these uh, blue shades and purple shades represent extremely cold temperatures. The the, uh, silvery blue colors represent like single digits and teens, and the purple colors are below zero Fahrenheit, okay? So you can see, look at Siberia over here. You can see Siberia is extremely cold right now. All these areas in purple here are well below zero Fahrenheit. We can actually uh, just zoom in a little bit to some of the coldest parts of the Northern Hemisphere, which is... um, Central and Eastern Siberia, you can see some of these temperatures here, minus 30, minus 28, minus 26 in Yakuts. Yakuts is one of the coldest cities in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, They have the uh, record low temperature for the Northern Hemisphere. I think it was like minus 100 or something crazy like that. Right now, Yakuts is already at minus 26, okay? Always keep an eye on Yakuts. Yakuts is the uh, coldest area in the Northern Hemisphere. And um, when Yakut starts to get really, really cold, that means that there's an Arctic outbreak on the way. Um, And uh, you could see here in the US, we have some bitterly cold temperatures spilling into the lower 48. In the last 48 hours, you can see much of the country below freezing right now. Okay, Um, much of the Midwest here, you can see 20s, 30s, teens. Okay, so we do have some bitterly cold air spilling in from Canada down into the lower 48. 
We have places like Knoxville and Nashville in the low 40s to upper 30s. Um, pretty much the only warm areas are South Florida and South Texas right now. Even Tallahassee is in the 50s. Okay, uh, Raleigh 41, Virginia Beach 46. So um, it's going to be cold the next couple of weeks. I want to just share some of the uh, shorter term forecasts. There is going to be some uh, Arctic outbreaks in the next two to three weeks, possibly further. Okay, so if you live in the lower 48, expect the next at least two weeks to be below average. Okay, so um, also I want to just show you guys Europe. Okay, Europe is starting to feel the cold too. All right, let's just look at Eastern Europe, which is where we have this big war going on. You can see in Ukraine, there's a lot of 30s right now. And uh, it's already uh, late morning as of the filming of this video. It's late morning in Ukraine here in uh, Pennsylvania. It's 1030 p.m. Eastern time. So that would make it uh, in the morning in Ukraine. Actually, that would be like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Uh, 5 a.m., 530. And you can see a lot of 30s here. Eastern parts of uh, Ukraine already in the 20s. Kharkiv, 26. Sumy, 26. Um, so winter setting in in Ukraine. Okay. Now I want to just, uh, show you guys the latest forecast, um, here for, in the U S and you can see there's a lot of winter weather advisories across the country. We have the entire Appalachians, uh, under a winter weather advisory, uh, for the next two days. And my area, central PA, we're supposed to get uh, up to three inches of snow tomorrow through Wednesday morning. Okay. And also you have, uh, upstate New York, the Catskill mountains, the Berkshires. You also have a few inches of snow, uh, in this area as well. And, and also the, uh, higher elevations of the Southern and central Appalachians here in, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina. Okay. Several inches of snow here. We also have in the Midwest also winter weather advisory. So be careful if you're driving, if you live in any of these areas shaded in blue. A lot of people haven't driven in snow for a few months because this is going to be the first snow of the season. Okay, so a lot of people aren't used to it. Um, they're going to be driving faster and, um, you know, there could be some more accidents because it's the first snow. So just be very careful. Now, I want to just share some forecasts here. So this is the Arctic Oscillation Index, and this tells us when we have Arctic outbreaks. And you can see the last uh, basically month and a half, we've been positive. Okay, you see this line here, how it's been uh, positive. You can see this line in the middle represents zero. So anything on the top half of this uh, chart is positive and when it's positive that means warmer weather that means that the arctic air is up in the north pole and when it starts to go negative that's when the arctic air spills out of the pole and uh comes down here to the lower 48 so for example if you look at the second half of august into the first half of september we were pretty much negative for that whole period and if you remember, there were some very early frosts and freezes in September and late August. I remember here we got a frost in like the second or third weekend in September, which is you know probably a good two weeks to three weeks early. And then it went extremely positive and we had 70, even 80 degree days and uh, you know through November and now it's going negative again. You see how it's crashing here? Okay, for the second half of November, it's crashing. So next two, possibly three, four weeks are going to be below average. So just be prepared for that. I want to just read to you the latest update from the NOAA on the La Nina. So we are in a La Nina advisory. And um, they're saying that uh, there's a 60, uh, I'm sorry, there's a 76% chance of La Nina during Northern Hemisphere winter, December through February, 2022 to 2023, with a transition to ENSO neutral favored in February through April, 57% chance. So this La Nina is, is gonna last all the way through springtime. And it's really starting to deepen now. I wanna show you 
some of the values, how strong this La Nina is. This is not just a weak La Nina. This is a moderately strong La Nina. It's not the strongest La Nina, but it's moderately strong. And because there's, it's the third one back to back, it's going to have an effect, um, you know, on the lower 48 on Europe. Uh, the Northern hemisphere is really going to feel it this winter. Um, so let me just uh, scroll down here to show you guys uh, some of these values here. Okay. So um, a La Nina is, is basically when the tropical equatorial Pacific has a sea surface temperature of half a degree centigrade below average or colder is considered a La Nina. And we're at 1.0 in the Nino 3.4 region. Okay. So I'm just going to show you guys what that means. They have these different regions of the uh, equatorial Pacific and the Nino 3.4 is the one that they use. It's kind of like an average, okay, uh, of the entire equatorial Pacific and it's 1.0 right now below average, 1.0 centigrade below average. So that's um, moderately strong. A, a very strong La Nina would be like 1.5 and uh, you can see the Nino regions one plus two are at 1.4 right now. And so typically these Eastern regions here, the Nino 1.2 and the Nino three are always colder. And the Nino 3.4 and the Nino four are usually warmer. So um, it's possible that this 1.4 is going to spread you know, and, and it's going to really deepen. OK, but I want to just uh, share this map here, you can see going back to uh, last winter, okay, here we have some graphs showing the uh, the La Ninas here and the sea surface temperature, and you can see how it just plummeted um, from last spring. You can see it, it tanked uh, about a year ago in December, it was negative one. And then it warmed up a little bit in uh, late winter to spring. And then it's just been crashing ever since. And look at where we are now, October, November. We're at a low point in all of these Nino regions here. Okay. Um, we're just, we've completely crashed. So um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really strong La Nina. So just, you know, make sure you guys are prepared. You can see on this uh, map here. This area in blue represents the uh, below average sea surface temperatures, and that's that's a huge area there. This is a strong La Nina, uh, moderately strong. So, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see exactly how long this La Nina lasts and how strong it's going to get. But, um, you know, it could be a pretty strong La Nina that's going to linger through the rest of the winter into the spring even which would make make a, a cold spring cold and wet spring so be prepared for that a long cold winter with a cold and wet spring to follow okay so this is uh all of the sea surface temperature anomalies in the last uh 10 years 12 years and you can see what i was talking about 2010 you can see the winter of 2010 we had a minus 1.6 La Nina, which is extremely strong. And that winter to 2010 into 2011 was extremely uh, snowy and cold, at least where I was living in upstate New York. I don't know how many feet of snow we got, but we had like blizzards every week and just extremely cold temperatures. Um, and uh, then there was a, a second La Nina from 2011 to 2012, but it was weaker and pretty much the, the entire last decade from 2010 to 2020, we didn't have too many La Ninas. It was mostly neutral. We had a, an a El Nino, a pretty strong El Nino from 2015 to 2016. But you can see uh, pretty cold 2016 uh, and 2017. We had some light La Ninas. But now look at, look at uh, how it's changing now. The, the pattern has flipped. OK, so you can see from 2020 till now, it's pretty much been negative, negative uh, sea surface temperatures starting starting from uh, spring of 2020 is when it started to go negative. 
and it hasn't been positive since the spring of 2020. That's a long time to have negative uh, sea surface temperatures for that long. You could see 2020 into 2021, we had a strong La Nina, 1.2, 1.3, below average SST anomalies. And then uh, last winter, we went down to negative 1.0 for uh, December, January. um, And now we're also uh, going down to negative 1.0. And it's pretty much this whole year, it's been, uh, you know, even this this whole year, it's been kind of like La Nina has been dragging on. It never really went neutral at all from last winter. So we're in like a very elongated La Nina now. So just wanted to give you this update, guys. Uh, I'll keep you posted, but just make sure you're prepared for the winter. It's going to be a long, cold winter and probably a rainy and cold spring Okay, hopefully we'll get some warm ups here and there, um, but just be prepared for the worst. Wanted to give you this update. The La Nina is deepening and uh, there's no no end in sight right now. So it's going to last a few more months. And so we could see some Arctic air outbreaks. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Take care. God bless. And don't forget the three P's. Prepare, practice and persevere.